Alright guys, we found the wee little bit of open water in New Jersey. I've been out a couple times so far this year with no success. So I'm going to start off There's some deep water right here, um, and yeah, hopefully we can uh, at least get my first fish of the year. I don't really care how big it is. But. Is it a Johnson thin fish or minnow? I'm using 20 pounds right up. It was like old line. It was like Power Pro. It's so bad. And for that new high seas to come in. It's like so tangled. It's, it's old line. You gotta change your line pretty often. This is just so bad. That's my fault for not changing it. Bushes. Finally, I got a cast out. Such what I'm doing. Letting it fall to the bottom. Picking it up, it looks like a dying minnow or a shad. In this case, more like a minnow or a shiner because that's what's in here. There's a shad in this pond. Minnows, bluegills, frogs, crawfish. But there's a nice little deep channel that runs to the left of me. And I want to really try to target my bait in it specifically. You know, the sun is going to have them come up a little bit shallower. But they want that really quick access to deep water as well. some really really big bass in this pond I will tell you that very tough to get fish to bite here there's so much food here and these fish are just not in a hurry to uh, to eat you know they really can eat whenever they want here um, not a whole lot of bass in here not a lot of competition so these fish just like you know they just have an, they just have easy pickings at a buffet essentially whenever they want but you know what though I'm dying to get out it's the only open water available so right now it's the best pond I can fish it's the only pond I can fish Alrighty, that's my first fish of uh, 2018. It's a little bluegill. Okay, not what I was after. Sweet. You know what? I've never been so happy to catch a bluegill in my entire life. It's on a blade bait. Six pound test, but this is what these fish are eating in there. And that's a good sign because, uh, you know, fish are, fish are active. Okay, guys. Just want to take some time and take a picture of that fish, post it on social media because I'm probably one of the first people in the area to actually catch a fish of this year. Not on the ice. I don't do ice fishing. You know, I think it's kind of a gamble with safety. In New Jersey, and nothing safe, but given that, ooh, I just had something smashed it. What the hell? Given New Jersey is usually not as cold as as it is this year, I just don't like taking a chance. Um, I know these lakes can freeze over pretty thick, but it's just not a gamble 
that I'm willing to take, especially not alone. I don't have a whole lot of friends in Jersey who fish. So, like, you know, or at least not as hardcore as I do. So, I just, you know, it, it's not smart going alone. I can run into trouble out here alone too, but it's a lot easier when you're not falling through the ice and freezing cold water. I wonder if I ran back to the car and got my Fire Tiger blade bait. If that would work better, considering the forge you're imitating in this pond is primarily bluegill. There are some shiners in here, but I think these bass really just, they don't really eat much. When they do eat, they just take a, a big bluegill snack, and that's what I think really kind of goes on here. But I could be wrong. I don't know, bluegill snack. It's like a bluegill dinner. A lot of them, that's the smallest bluegill I really have seen in this pond. You know, the bass are primarily are pretty... What the hell? Baby, come back! Any kind of folk could see There was something in everything about you Baby, come back! Check this out. This is six pound high seas fluorocarbon. You just saw me wrestle in that tree for this bait. Very abrasion resistant. There's not a nick on my line. How about that? That's why I choose high seas, guys. It's so strong, so re abrasion resistant. It's just a beast. And you need that. Something to keep in mind in the winter is that a lot of times on cloudier days the fish will hug tight to the bottom you know it's a little bit warmer down there most of the most of the winter not all the winter towards the uh, later parts of the winter it's uh, you know a little bit warmer on top of the water because the water kind of flips similar to that of the fall turnover but generally still kind of in the middle of the winter deeper the waters are generally a little bit warmer and then eventually you know the cold air on top is denser and sinks that's what kind of happens but what will happen these fish will hug tight to the deeper slightly warmer bottom what I like about this jerk bait right here this is a Rick Klon, uh RCSCX jerkbait by Lucky Strike. And I forgot what color this is, but I really like it. It has that, you know, that, that bluegill had a small kind of bluish, uh, blue purplish hue to it, uh, but primarily it was pale, and that's kind of what this this uh, bait looks like. It had a real uh, pale head, just like this bait, and I'm really trying to imitate bluegill with this, at least in the color pattern. Um, you know, the profile is more kind of shad or minnow like, which is fine. You know, there are minnows in here too, but that color. Is really going to imitate that bluegill in the cold water very, very well. And, you know, when I'm fishing a suspending jerkbait in colder water, the really important thing is to match the hatch. I really do believe it. Because, one, you know, you're generally fishing it in, you know, somewhat clear water. Um, in addition to that, um, I think these fish, you know, because you're fishing it slower, they get a much better look at it. Um, than they usually would and you know when you're let's say you're uh, you know at the Thousand Islands or wherever in the summertime uh, working it really really fast for uh, a really aggressive smallmouth bass or here you know light twitches long pauses um, not really moving it a whole lot it's kind of just sitting in the water column uh, more than it's moving. Um, so I think it's really important to match the hatch when it comes to uh, cold water jerkbait fishing. Uh, like really important. And also notice I am jerking it on a slack line so the bait darts more radically. 
Alright guys, so one of the biggest mistakes I see out there with people fishing their blade bait is a lot of times overworking the bait. Essentially what you want to do is just cast your bait out and you want it to sink to the bottom. All the way to the bottom, don't worry about getting snagged, you can always replace your bait. Uh, make sure you have plenty of them before you go out. Um, what you want to do, um, let your bait sink all the way to the bottom. And what you want to do is just slowly lift your rod just a little bit, just to the point where you feel the bait vibrate. Okay? Right after you feel it vibrate, just drop it. Essentially what you're imitating is a dying bait fish in this cold weather. Uh, as we know, the majority of fish, including bass, bluegills, shad, and, and you know minnows and shiners, they're all cold-blooded fish. And um, what happens to a lot of the bait fish with this cold uh, weather, it kind of shocks their system a little bit. And um, they start to die if they don't really have access to uh, warmer water. And essentially what they do, they kind of sink to the bottom and they kind of flutter up. And that's exactly what you're trying to imitate when you're fishing this blade bait. Just, you know, soft movements, uh, try to snap off the grass if you can, if you have to. You don't really want to impair the action. Um, but you just want to kind of just slowly lift it off. You can, you know, look, I've caught him snapping it and working it really, really hard. But you don't, the key is you don't want to move the bait all that much when you're uh, actually fishing it. Just a little bit at a time, you know, a little bit of movement on the rod translates to a lot of movement of your lure underwater. A lot of people don't realize that. You may only move your rod a couple of inches, but your bait can move towards you a couple of feet. As crazy as that sounds, but you, it's something to really keep in mind when you're fishing this bait. Is Really be aware of how much you're moving it and what you're trying to imitate with it. That was so sick. I'm gonna kill this fish, dude. That ain't good. Well, I'm not, uh, he's not gonna make it probably. Uh, damn it, dude. I mean, he choked it, but damn. So yeah, guys, I caught that, like I said, I caught that fish in a black, blue, and purple Colorado bladed spinnerbait with a gold blade in the half ounce size. Uh, I don't really know the size of the blade, to be completely honest, um, but it's a really big blade, 
and uh, Colorado blades provide a lot of lift in the water and the heavy weight of the blade and the actual head itself, it's the half ounce, um, allows you to cast far and it sinks pretty quickly. But Alright guys, so I think I'm going to wrap it up right here. Um, I have somewhere to be. Uh, I, gotta, <laughs> I have to get a haircut. But, um, you know, definitely was a, uh, I'd say a very productive day of fishing. Um, I only caught two fish. I caught a sunfish, uh, a bluegill sunfish, and a bass. And a blade bait and a, uh, this big Colorado blade spinner bait right here uh, that got the bass. Um, you know, literally everywhere in the state right now is, uh, it's frozen. I mean, I've even seen, uh, I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen, uh, for this way, if you're watching my YouTube videos, you're certainly seeing, uh, one rod, one reels videos. I've been seeing them ice fish in, in Maryland. Like, that's ridiculous. I'm in New Jersey, like, everything's frozen. But this, this particular pond, um, you know, it's not too far. Nothing fancy. Um, but as you can see, most of it is, is, uh, is open water and that's just because of the uh, the black bottom and the uh, warmer inflows that uh, flow into this lake or pond whatever but um yeah had a bass crush my spinnerbait and uh, until the next con until the next time uh, never give up just you know keep fishing hard and uh, just do me you got y'all do me a favor uh, catch a big one for me and hopefully I'll see you all in the water